Is it possible to play the GSL with a broken arm? Have we witnessed the game of the year? And can you light a candle with a firefly? All of these questions will be answered in today's episode of StarCraft Today. StarCraft Today. Your favorite StarCraft news show. Last week Group D of the GSL got played and it was a banger of a group. Without a single Protoss yet in the round of 10, this was the group that had to deliver. With two Tosses, one Terran and one Zerg. And the first match did not start out well for the Protoss fans around the world as Gumiho managed to take out Trap. A huge upset. Gumiho, who recently returned from the army, has been steadily increasing in skill with some cool build orders and honestly some solid play, took out Trap in a clean 2-0 sweep. In the other match, another upset where a lot of people know that creator has good PvZ and he can beat the best players in the world if he's on point. Um, Solar definitely still was favored here as he's been showing good results in the past 3-4 months. However, not good enough today as creator took him out 2-1 and that meant we had the most unlikely winners match in creator versus Gumio. And here we saw creator doing what Trap couldn't, taking out Gumiho and advancing in first place in this group. Now, this wasn't by any means the hardest group, but it's still very impressive for Creator. I think a lot of people would have put him in last or in third place if they would have to guess beforehand. So, um, yeah, big congrats there to Creator. In the lower match, Solar versus Trap, and Solar just didn't look strong enough. Trap taking out Solar and advancing on to the decider match, where in the revenge match, in the return match against Gumio, he did manage to make it work, winning 2-1. to one. So overall in map score against Gumio, he actually was 2-3. Two, two maps won, three maps lost, but because he is the one that won the second match, um, he is the one that advances into the round of 10, and that meant that we had two Protosses in the round of 10 already. However, that is not where it ended for Protoss players, as in Group E, we also had a Protoss player, and perhaps the most talked about Protoss player at the moment in Korea. He's considered by many Koreans to be currently the best DOS, the most difficult to play against, with a very large variety of build orders. And of course, I'm talking about Hero. In his first match against Cure, he also made it happen, as Cure tried to pull everything out of his uh, sleeve, every ace that was still stuck in there, but it wasn't enough. No SCV pool could beat Hero, and Hero, uh, with a quick 2-1, managed to advance into the winner match. On the other hand, we saw Bunny, who was playing, well, I'm not quite sure if the hand is still broken or the arm is still broken, but three days before his group match, this picture was taken, and I think he broke his arm about two weeks ago, so he didn't have the most brilliant practice, and uh, honestly, it kind of showed in these games. Ragnarok with some uh, swift proxy hatch play, both games proxying a hatchery on the other side of the map, and both games just winning in a rather clean way. That left us with Ragnarok against Hero in the winner's match, and one once again, Ragnarok pulled out two proxy hatch build orders against Hero, and Hero just wasn't quite ready for them and could not win against Ragnarok. And both Group D and E, having the most unlikely player get first place in the group, uh, in the lower match, of course, we still had to have Cure versus Bunny in some sick late game on Pride of Altaris. It looked like Bunny actually was capable of playing some decent StarCraft despite his broken arm, but sadly it was not enough as he also went down 0 two against Cure, and that means that he was out of the tournament, so perhaps playing GSL with a broken arm is, is not the greatest thing in the world, although Bunny did prove that it is indeed possible. Then in the final match of the day, we had once again a revenge match, Cure versus Hero, and once again Hero just was a little bit too strong, making it actually more convincing than in the first series. Cure got knocked out, the player that won GSL Season 3, not in the round of 10. It is a little bit surprising, but I'm just glad that we have three tosses in the round of 10. Moving on to the game of the week. We had an absolutely phenomenal game between Goblin and Christianer. And I said it at the start, I think this might actually be the game of the year. And this is not because the game necessarily had the, the an insane quality of decision making. It was the cleanest game mechanically, but it was so entertaining. It was good. It had base trades. We had fights lasting for six, seven minutes between four units. Stasis wards hitting stalkers and then disruptors detonating on top of the stalkers once the stasis wears off. It was honestly a crazy low eco game. And for 
the last 20 minutes of the 30 minute game both players were on, 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 on practically no eco like 10 10 to 12 workers probably on average well maybe even less maybe five workers on average during this entire period a crazy game with with multiple base trades multiple situations in which i think both players should have and could have and would have lost in a, a different universe um I, we'll, we'll leave a link in the in the description it's it's an absolutely bonkers game between Cristiano and goblin game three uh, i think it was a round of 16 of the esl pro tour but sometimes it doesn't matter what round it is all that matters is that the game is insanely entertaining and this one definitely was and as always, of course, we had these ESL Open Cups as well for the first week again, where the players could start collecting points for the qualification of Intel Extreme Masters Katowice 2023. This was the first week, week 117. So with that out of the way, on Sunday, we started in Korea. And the finals, Dark versus Cure, this was one day, by the way, before Cure's GSL group, Cure actually managed to take out Dark 3-1 to in a pretty convincing series. So Cure must have been feeling good. Sadly, that did not quite translate in a good result in his GSL group but of course you can't win them all he probably rather would have won the GSL group but you know you get the ESL Open Cup life is life here it is it is what it is moving over to Europe we saw Neep with a pretty decent run once again Neep has been performing very well as of late but once again was not good enough for a Terran as uh, it was indeed a Terran that took him out Clem in the finals and Clem uh, yeah, just showing a dominating performance in Europe, showing that he probably is the best European Terran right at this moment. In NA, once again, Max Pax with the win, and in the final against Dark. Dark, who uh, gets two final appearances but does not get a single win, has to be pretty uncommon for Dark, who is known for, for winning finals and, in general, showing up in finals as well. So, big up there to Max Pax. I think this is the second week in a row in which he wins the NA Cup. Did not quite manage to get that far in the European one, but America is Danish territory right now. So, congratulations to all three winners, and let's move on to the clip of the week. And this week's clip of the week is not necessarily even that good of a move, but I absolutely love the reaction of Statfest in this clip. It is Clem picking up a Marine to trigger a stasis ward. It's not the most revolutionary thing. It really isn't, but Statfest just can't believe it. And plus one armor and charge. Oh, the Oracle ah uh, does get picked off. Nice job, right? Oh, 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 Clem, what? He just... He just pick up Dodge Micro the Stasis Ward. Are you kidding me? How is this kid law-breakingly good? Absolutely love this clip. It warms my little heart to see a caster this excited for a Marine being picked up in a medevac and not being actually uh, stuck in the Stasis. You know, you know that Statfest cares for every single Marine out there. Sadly, that is going to be it for today's episode of StarCraft Today, but not before we answer the question, can you light a candle with a Firefly? The answer is no, as uh, Fireflies produce what is called cold light. And the reason for that is, is because the oxygen uh, reacts with something that is in the Firefly itself, and it's called luciferin. And it causes a chemical reaction that gives off the Firefly's familiar glow. Um, it doesn't generate a lot of heat, and if you hold a, a firefly next to a candle, nothing will happen. Um, so yeah, th that's going to be your answer. Thanks everyone <laughs> for watching this fantastic episode of StarCraft Today. I hope you did enjoy it. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. Um, I hope to see all of you next time for a new video. It's been a pleasure. It's been an honor. Bye-bye.